join me, Shabadu, live with Sean and Jay, Sunday, August 7th, 2016, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be a blast. I Welcome to, to Sean you. and Jay live this week, man. Our guest, fantastic choreographer, dancer, supreme producer, uh, been in many flicks. His name is Adolfo. And we're going to call him Shabadoo for the rest right. of the show. Please, everybody. Jay, welcome Shabadoo. Hey, Shabadoo, what's hey. happening? Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Man, it is so Hello good. Hello from, from sunny California. Woo! Sunny California, yeah. It's good to have you on, man. It's good to finally meet you after all these years of watching your stuff in the movies and TV. It's been, It's awesome. It's awesome to have you here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So how's it going down there uh, in your neck of the woods? In in New Mexico, it's great. The weather's been the last few days. It's been kind of rainy, and but it's still nice. A little bit more humid than I like, but it's been right. good. Okay. And Niagara Falls, so romantic. And Niagara Falls, it's been really hot up here, man. We've had uh, somewhat a hot week. It's been crazy, uh, like hotter than the desert weather, really. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of cooled off there a day or so ago. But other than that, it's uh, it's beautiful. It's uh, you know, it's it's a great town, and uh, yeah, I know yourself. You've you've been up to Canada before. You've been here. Oh before. yeah, yes, of course. I've been I've been to Canada, Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal. Uh, I've been to uh, where was it? Uh, Edmonton. Edmonton. Yes. So I've been to quite a few places in Canada. I love it up there. Guys, it's, it's, like, great. it's so breathtaking. I'm pretty sure you've obviously seen movies and, and you know, uh, different uh, things with Niagara Falls, but it's nothing like whenever you see it up close. It, it's uh, it's the same as, like, you know, Hollywood Hills, uh, you know, Hollywood and L.A. It's, it's something, you know, you got to be there to see it. Right. Disneyland, it's all like that, you know. I, I've always wanted to visit Niagara Falls. Well, Ever since you know what? Seeing it on TV and in movies and everything, I've just never – seeing the magnificence of it with my with my eyes and uh, I would love to it's one of the greatest wonders of the world right oh yeah absolutely let's start out absolutely. let's start out asking you like what made you want to be a dancer when you were younger I mean what 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 was your influence when you were growing up well you know I can't really pinpoint what made me want to be a dancer I just it's just something that I did at a very early age um, Somewhere around three years old uh, or so, I just started dancing, and uh, it eventually became part of who I am, and, and and it was a way of escaping my surroundings. You know, I grew up in Chicago, in the inner city Chicago area, in the projects and the surrounding uh, impoverished areas of Chicago, and it was a way of of, of sort of escaping that environment for me. I would dance in my room a lot. <laughs> and it wasn't dancing as you would know it, but I would just like put on music and just jump on the bed to the music and flop on the floor. And then, and then I would actually, you know, watch performers perform on television. Every Saturday morning we'd have, you know, the musicals that play every Saturday morning. You know, uh, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, Donald O'Connor, uh, Ray Bolger, um, you had the uh, Nicholas Brothers, you had Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, in, but I would just find myself, you know, imitating some of them and, and trying to do some of those those moves at, at uh, holiday parties. And, and I found dancing could get, you could make money dancing right away because my, my relatives would give me money, you know, you know, quarters and nickels. And that's what quarters really meant a lot, you know. You get a quarter, you could go buy, you know, a Twinkie and a and a drink, you know. <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm rich, you know. Oh, yeah, you um, love it. But I, my, my relatives tell me, and my mom would tell me, even as a young kid, that I would dance with such maturity. And I was watching, I had, just to give you an idea, I was happening to watching a Michael Jackson video. Woo, Michael. He was, he was in the Jackson 5. And he's wearing a, like looks like a, 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 a pink fedora or a pink hat. 
and he's on the Ed Sullivan show, and he's, I think he's doing uh, singing and dancing too. I want you back. And the way he was dancing and moving with that sort of maturity, I danced like that, with that kind of maturity at a very early age. Uh, again, three and four and five years old, I could dance that way. That is so, awesome. Yeah, so my, my roots started from my childhood. Right, and my so... Great, my great, my, I got to say this, my greatest influence, though, believe it or not, and I tell people this, and they're kind of surprised, but and it's, and it's really part of my Shabadoo style, if you will, is uh, David Ruffin from Temptation. Oh, wow. I just loved his hand gestures and the way he expressed himself himself when he sang and he danced. And I was like, I just really connected with him. And, and, and in a lot of ways, I'm like a little bit like David Ruffin and, and Cap Calloway and, and those guys. Mm. But, well, so when you guys, uh, how old were you when you guys come up? Was it the original Lockers or was it just called the Lockers? Uh, yeah, we didn't, need, we didn't need the word original because we were original. Yeah, uh, right. We just um, called the Lockers. It, it, our, our original name was the Campbell Lock Dancers, then the Campbell Lockers, and then it was later shortened to the Lockers for legal reasons. Don Campbell, uh, the originator of the lock, he... Uh, was in a, con a contract, and, uh, and for some reason, the, the guy wanted to hold him up about the, dan the name, so the name was shortened and changed to The Lockers. But so they, before that, we were at the Soul Train game before that, though. That's right, you're on Soul Train. That's, that's cool. That, that's so awesome. We were Soul Train gang in, in, in Los Angeles. I danced on the one in Chicago, but then the one in Los Angeles. And... Uh, and it was here that, you know, we really took off me and my sister Fawn. And uh, when the group was being uh, formed, uh, I was chosen by uh, the group and, and, and Tony Basil and Campbell Lock Jr. and others. That, hey, you know what, Shop would do would be great. And I think Dean Stockwell, I think she, he, uh, Tony Basil was dating Dean Stockwell, the actor. Mm -hmm. And I think they were even living together at one point. And... Uh, she later told me that Dean Stockwell said, hey, you need to get that kid Shabadoo. That, kid, that kid's a movie star, you know. So I, they said jokingly referred to me as the movie star. <laughs> you, you, were, uh, you were on Soul Train, but you were also on Carol Burnett too, eh? Right, right, right. It's a locker. We did the Carol Burnett show. That was our, our coming out gig as the lockers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Carol Burnett show. Scorpio we danced to. Scorpio. How were how was she and and uh, how 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 does that all work? I mean, how did, how were you recognized by uh, was your agents at the time? Did you guys have agents or were you guys yes. just, just yeah? Well, we had we had an agent. Our agent was uh, Fred Lawrence, and he was an agent at the uh, uh, International Creative Management (ICM) uh, agency. So we were assigned. Our first agent was ICM. And uh, I and he was our official booker. He booked us uh, on the Carol Burnett show. And I was, you know, again, that was exciting. Carol Burnett was great. She was just such a lovely lady and so nice and and just loved locking. You know, she loved our crew and and it was it was it was awesome being on the show. That so I, I that comes to um, the um, evolution of dancing. So you got pop locking and all the different stuff that came afterwards, and then break dancing, and then well, I mean, the, the you, lineage. Sorry, go, go ahead. Well, the lineage is you know this term pop locking is a term exclusive to the to uh, Southern California, the West Coast. Uh, it's a term that I think came about honestly, but I think it was a cross between two particular dance styles. One was, in those days, we didn't do this, uh, let's say, locking, and then we did popping, and then we did this other dance. We would do them all at the same time. So if you saw someone dancing and they were locking, and then they were popping in the same moment, being from, I guess, from the inner city, they'd say, oh, he's pop locking. They wouldn't say, he's popping and locking. they just leave off the word and. And just and, it, and that kind of resonated with uh, uh, young black kids in, in, in the uh, Compton and, and South Central area of Los Angeles. 
And this and that kind of really took off as a term, hop locking. But it's not, it's a sub-term, it's not the main term. They're two different styles of dance. Locking and then there's popping. And some people, uh, like in this country, you know, we have a certain way we speak in New Orleans, you know, even though it's English with a little French in there, a little Spanish, a little this, and then you get what is known as patois, I think it's called up there, or you speak in Creole or whatever. Okay, yeah. it's kind of like that. Uh, it's it's really a term used in a specific area. So the lineage is soul training, soul dancing, uh, locking, and then and then disco dancing, disco dancing, which was the hustle and all of that stuff, and then a style of dance called whacking or punking and posing. And punking and posing started in the gay community in Los Angeles, and I was the sort of carrier, if you will. I brought this dance, I learned the punking and posing from the original Garbo boys, uh, as, they, as they called themselves at that point. And it was Andrew Tinker, uh, Arthur, uh, and uh, Billy Starr. And so I learned this, this punking style of dance, and I infused it with locking. And that, together, is the dance that the world saw. They saw the whacking style that I uh, uh, created and, and popularized on my television shows and in films. So that whacking style, they never really saw the gay style. They saw the, the mixture. And I jokingly said, I, I'm the father of the first bisexual street dance form. But <laughs> essentially, that's how it rolled. So in any case, if you, if you follow me, soul training, soul dancing, locking, locking, Disco dancing, disco dancing, uh, whacking, punking, posing, and some people even refer to it as the shabadoo, and then into uh, uh, boogalooing and, and, and that so whole thing, and then b-boying later, uh, which was in the early 70s. It might have been happening in the late 70s in New York, but it, we weren't aware of it until the early 80s. That's when the world starts to recognize that this exists. So I have I have a story to share with you. Uh, when Breaking came out, I saw it the first day it came out in the theaters here in Toronto. I, I lived in Scarborough. Now Scarborough is a rough part of Toronto, always okay. was, and it was like Regent Park is a rough part in Toronto, which is downtown area, and then there's Jane and Finch. You might have ever heard of Jane and Finch. That's a real rough area. And then, of course, there's the West End of Toronto. But when Breaking came out, you were my inspiration. Uh, well, breakdancing was a thing. Like, obviously, at the time, we were really into it. We had our ghetto blaster. We even spray-painted our cardboards. We had our own cardboard. We'd bring them to the parks. And then we'd go against other kids. And then we'd stand around and we'd, you know, do judging and all that kind of stuff, man. And then when Breaking came out, dude, I, I, you know what? I have hair standing on my arm because I, I, it's so amazing to talk to you. And uh, I, I'm really happy that you're here, by the way. It's amazing. So when Breaking came out for you, what was that? Um, what? I don't know. Like, I mean, it, 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 it just took, it took the Breaking world by storm. You know what I mean? Well, the street dance world, you know, and I'm, you know, allow me to educate you guys in terms of the terminology. Okay. The umbrella term for us on the West Coast and where it pretty much started, uh, we refer to it as street dancing. Okay. And street dancing encompasses many different styles of dance. And uh, but in terms of breaking or break dancing, this is a term that the media and other people uh, popularized. But uh, b-boys themselves call themselves b-boys or b-girls. Uh, and uh, so just so you know, there's a distinction to them, for them, between the two, uh, break, break in versus b-boying. So they would prefer, and then you guys, in the future, if you ever have other street dancers, maybe you'll have a Crazy Legs on or a Poppin' Pete or some other uh, notable street dancer, and you'll have them on the show. You'll know the correct terminology, and I would hope that any listeners out there can also uh, appreciate. You know, and a lot of work and, and blood, sweat, and tears has gone into our craft and our trade, and it just makes sense to use the proper proper language. Now, having said that, it was a pretty exciting time. Uh, it was, you know, it 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 
it was in hip hop's infancy. It was it was its golden era when everything kind of came together. The East Coast, the West Coast, the middle, in the middle, all came together as one unit. And it was just a, a really exciting time and, and and for me to be able to sit back and really see how much it motivated people, how it made people feel was was exceptional. Uh, I'm just really happy to, to have been a part of it and and one of the you know key figures of the movement. Um, and to this very day, I'm still very happy and surprised at how much it's grown. It's grown and how it continues to grow. Ozone, ozone, ozone. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you, you, you know, the film's breaking. Uh, again, we, it, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to uh, my uh, fellow stars of the film, uh, Lucinda Dickey, who plays Special K. And then there was uh, Michael Chambers, Boogaloo Shrimp, who played Turbo. And you know, we really had a chemistry that really worked. And it, 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 it took these different personalities and for everyone around the world to see somewhat of our separate personalities in themselves that really helped to ignite the, the hip hop culture as we know it. <laughs> oh, so yeah. For sure. Now, just to finish off that story, so we went and saw it on the first day, and I, it, it was, I think, rated PG-13 or something at the time. It was, anyway, and I, I don't know if I was of a, I don't, I can't remember, and I took my friend to it, and when I got home, when we got home, we got into so much, I, I got into trouble, and I was grounded. My mom didn't ground me, but, I, I mean, I wasn't allowed, my friend, you know, my friend was grounded <laughs> two weeks because of the content of the film at the time, and I was like, really? Oh, you know, well, I'm surprised because in the film Breaking and Breaking Two, there was no drug use, no, no drinking, no, no. no foul language, no. and there were no gratuitous sex scenes. Yeah. I don't even think that we even that anyone even kissed in the movie. I, I don't know. So I think I, I would think that it probably was. I think uh, Breaking and Breaking Two had a PG rating. And I think people were were wary of it because of the the environment in which we danced. That, that they gave it the sort of edginess, like they knew, okay, those are the people across the tracks, you know, and they're down there in the neighborhood, you know. It, it, was, it had all of that too, of course. But and that's what I think that a lot of parents were. Some people in the beginning were like concerned, like, wow, you know. Is my kid going to start going down into the ghetto and <laughs> and they were and they actually were you you were, it was it was the most remarkable time you'd get these kids from the suburbs they would brave life and limb and 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 would enter the ghetto and they're just like let's dance you know absolutely and they didn't care you know and you know what's crazy about it they were allowed to enter a lot of these environments you know with with open loving arms like come on come on do it and you know, dancing just made everybody feel good, and we we, we got a sense of brotherhood and unity, and and, and, and it was a wonderful time. That, I that anything I've ever seen. Oh yeah, no, and uh, no, that so like I said, yeah, he was, and then I didn't get in trouble, but um, just oh man, I I I I'm so happy that you're here. I I I'm ecstatic, and <laughs> and yeah, I I just am. So that that brings me to the next thing, which is. Okay. Kind of like a segue. So because he was grounded, we used to watch Friday the 13th Part 3. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that was okay in his home. Okay. Yeah. Break and forget about it. So yeah, you, can, you can kill people, but don't just start breakdancing in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me into a segue, which I'm going to pass over to Jay, because Jay and I are... Uh, Friday the 13th freaks, like Friday the 13th movies. I've interviewed uh, C.J. Graham, Steve Dash. We've interviewed wow. R.E. Lehman, the first Jason of Friday the 13th. And I'm going to push this over to Jay because Steel Frontier, which a flick that you did, with with Kane Hodder, who is yeah, that was cool. as well. I'm going to pass this over to Jay. Yeah, I, I do. I love movies. And just let me say, I love – I have Miami Vice, the series here. 
And that's how we found that footage of you doing your dance. And that is, I love that dance you do, like with the mustache thing. That is just beautiful. You know, how, what was it? What's it? You know, working on movies like, did you actually meet Kane Hodder or anybody in the set, or how did that go down? Or were you just in there for a, a little bit? Because it's been a long time since I've seen it. Uh, would you uh, uh, Steel Frontier? Yeah, or? Steel Frontier. Steel Frontier. I was there for the whole shoot, and I auditioned for the role of Deacon. Right, and, Deacon. Yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. And uh, I just brought something really kind of crazy. If you actually watch the movie, if you have it, you'll see I have a pretty strange character in the film, and that just really the the director just really gave me. Uh, the uh, you know creative license to just create the kind of character I really wanted to play, and uh, I just played a really kind of crazy guy. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I, mean, I hung up with all of them on the uh, on the film. We were all there for for the majority of the shoot, yeah, and uh, so it, it was a really fun time. Uh, PM Entertainment, I think it was, uh, that produced it, and they were doing a lot of those low budget indie films, kind of like the uh, Canon films in a way. Right, and I love I love the canon stuff. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Just made a lot of them, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I love that stuff. Pippin, I think it's Pippin and Mer Merin. Pippin and Merin. Is yeah, the, 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 the yeah the company. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so they're sort of like the Nakam Golden and Yoram Globus in a way. Yeah, I, I love those two, man. They get, made some of the best, you know, all those type of films coming out, Invasion USA, and all that. Uh, so, yeah. but what what was it like, like Miami Vice, when you did the dance stuff? Did they just say dance and we'll film it? Did that take you like forever to film? Well, you yeah. know? well here's some backstory. I actually auditioned for the uh, the role of Ricardo Tubbs. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, actually, when I was down to the wire, and Philip Michael Thomas came in and took it. Well, I think it was three or four of us down to the wire for that role. And Philip Michael Thomas just came in and snatched it from my jowls. No. But the feedback I got back then was Michael Mann really liked me. And, uh, but he felt the feedback is he liked my acting. And he thought that was all cool. He liked the way I looked. But he felt in those days I just was a little younger looking than he wanted. It's next to Don Johnson. So, um, I didn't get the role. Obviously, you know, Philip Michael Thomas did, and deservingly so. He was he's wonderful in the role. And um, but as a sort of gracious gesture, Michael Mann offered me the the guest lead on the show, on the maze, the show. And we tried to do another series with I tried to I was close to getting another series with Michael Mann. Michael Mann was a, a big fan of mine in those days. And uh, he, he, he just offered me what they call a straight booking, a straight booking. There's no audition. You got the role, fly you in, let's do it. And I, he flew me to Florida and to Miami. And uh, he said, look, it, this, this guy's an informant. And he's been, he danced all night. He's a little wild. And, uh, you know, he's probably been doing some drugs and whatever. So all these gestures with this thing is like, gesturing that I've been doing cocaine and all that, because that was the 80s, and you know, so oh, yeah. I was like, I was, I, was, I, was, I was supposed to be a kind of high out of my mind kind of guy, which I think showed. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was very well done. It was very well done. Even the scene and, and in the back. Said, okay, go for it. Go for it. Do your thing. Yeah, so. That was very cool. So, um, talking about movies and TV shows, movies, especially, is there going to be another uh, break in movie uprising or revolution? Well, well you know, I, I've written a screenplay. I've written another screenplay that could very well be a break in three uh, screenplay. And it is my hope, and I've, I've courted a number of people for financing to get the picture mounted. Uh, I, I have fought long and hard for a specific budget amount. Now it's not too much. It's not, you know, it's not a, a, a tiny budget either. But I think that it hovers somewhere between twelve and fifteen million dollars. We need to make a break in three, and it's still considered low budget indie level even oh, yeah. for studio. And um, so my hopes are, and I'm meeting. I'm always meeting with people. I'm always, you know, we're always close. We're almost there, and then you know, for whatever reasons, you know, have to have to you know, postpone it or what have you. 
But I'm standing by, the screenplay is ready, I've got a great story, and I think a story that will resonate with young people today. And uh, I think when they see my character Ozone, uh, or me as Shabadu, it depends on how I position the film, whether it be a Breaking 3 or my own film, Breaking Uprising, it, uh, it will be uh, a sort of uh, passing the baton sort of, of a picture. I think reminiscent of a, of a few uh, films would be like uh, Creed was, uh, where, you know, you, you know I'm, I would be more like Sylvester Stallone, you know, <laughs> fooling the young guy that this, this is a soul of street dance or that kind of thing. Or uh, there's, a number, there's, so there's a number of films, uh, Miyagi would be another one that would come to my mind, like The Karate Kid. I'd be a little bit like Miyagi, you know, wax on, wax off. Yeah. Uh, maybe I have him sweeping a lot of sidewalks before he gets to, you know, actually, you know, dance or whatever. But it's those types of films that I think people will, will understand in terms of structure of, of, the, of, the, of the motion picture and, and the characters. Uh, I'm not trying to be the king of street dance in the Breaking 3 film, although I, my dance president will be felt. It's really not about what I did or trying to be what I was, but taking what I know and my knowledge, much like Sylvester Stallone did in Creed, right. and passing on this information to a new generation. Right, and that, was, what, that was a great movie, too. Yeah. They did that really, so, really well. Essentially, there's going to be some surprises when, they first, when, you, when the audiences finally see my screenplay on the silver screen. Uh, they will be surprised at some of the turns, the twists and turns in the picture. And what has happened over the the last thirty years since they've seen that, seen last seen Ozone or whatever. So, are you still working with like producer director director Eli Harris on this, or are you? Is he oh, working no, no, with Eli, you? Eli, Eli Harris is not involved in breaking at all. Uh, he's he has another picture. Uh, he's doing, he's producing called Beast Style, I believe, and. Uh, he was trying to, or uh, desiring of uh, matching me with Genuine. So Genuine and I would be, you know, uh, I, get, I, I think the gem, uh, Genuine would be my nemesis or whatever, or my, I'll be his or what, however. And uh, in this new film called Be Style, uh, so it's an entirely different picture altogether. It has nothing to do with breaking at all. So are you? You're in that one, right? Then yes. Well, you know, the the thing is, he's he's made an offer to my management, and it's something that that we read. We read the screenplay. We really like it. I think we think he has a great story there, and uh, he's right now uh, focusing on completing his budget. And when he when he completes his budget, you know, uh, we told him, yeah, we would love to do it. So uh, until that happens, we, you know. Was standing by him and, and, and wishing him all the the uh, good fortune he needs to, to make his picture. The um, uh, the original. You know, you know, I want to say this. You know, making a film in Hollywood or making a film period is a long and arduous process. It takes a long time to get these things made, years and years. So I want to say to my fans, whoever might be listening, don't be discouraged. It will happen. But it needs to happen the right way. It can't just be a cheap knockoff movie. It has to be done with some real passion. It has to be done with some real thought and some real creative imagination. Go ahead. Well, sorry, one of the questions that came through there was: uh, Would would any of the original cast members, uh, you know, uh, be be uh, like, uh, you know, just uh, cam? Would they have a cameo in it or not? Well, you know, I don't want to give. I don't. I don't want to give any spoiler alerts. Um, oh, okay. But, but I'll right. tell you. I'll tell you this: the fans won't be disappointed, and they 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 will they will be able to to. There'll be something for them in the film, uh, and uh, they'll be happy with it. I'm sure. So, out of what you've done in the past, what would have what have, what would have been one of your most favorite projects? Uh, you were in Xanadu. You were, you know, again, Steel Frontier, Breaking Breaking Two. You know, what what would have been one of your was Miami Vice better than any of the? I don't know your well, favorite. You know, at first of all, let me clear up another thing. Oh, there are many people who believe that I did Xanadu when, in fact, I ha I didn't. What? Yeah, many people think that that guy in that movie is me, but it isn't me. Well, there now, you go. 
I wish it was me since they send me the residual. But, <laughs> yeah, so, so just to let you know, the fans out there, and I've told people this, and, and they refuse to believe it. They said, no, that's Shabadu. That's I am not in Xanadu. Okay? But in any case, um, and I'm, I'm going to give you my answer with respect to what is my favorite project and, and all of that. And I, and, I don't, and I don't want to be, you know, cliche about this or anything, but my favorite project is always the one that I'm doing. And I love them all for all kinds of different reasons. And I can't really say one was better than the other. I enjoyed all of them. Some made more money for me than other ones. So it wasn't ever about the money. At the end of the day, it was about the experience that I had, you know, participating in, the, in these projects. Uh, so when I look back, I always remember something really great or really cool about doing it. I always remember some, some cool person I met. And I also remember some of the challenges I was faced with making some of those projects uh, for little or no money or what have you. And, you know, because those, you're faced with those challenges when you don't have money. You know, you're exposed, you know. And, but I've got to say, even those challenges I enjoyed. And, I, you know, it made me better. It helped me to see the filmmaking process from a different perspective. It, gave me, it, it, it forced me to grow. Uh, but I always enjoy every project I do. And here's a question I get asked. What is your favorite song? Again, my stock answer is my favorite song to dance to is the one I'm dancing to. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, that answers it all. <laughs> that's all right. Great. Well, uh, Baba, that's great. Thanks. Uh, everybody sure. out there. Uh, <laughs> sure. he, just nails, he nails everything on the head, didn't he? Yeah. Anything else? Uh, you want to know my favorite color? No. Oh. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's no, that's that's really hell like that's that's good because when I interviewed Steve Dash, he said the exact same uh, similar thing. He said, you know, he wasn't in it for the money. He just he no, he was in it for the money, sorry. He was in it for the money. Oh, it's not it's not the opposite. However, Ooh. however, he was the stunt man in Friday the thirteenth part two. He had the bag over his head. He was completely in it for the money. You know, he did Nighthawks with Sylvester Stallone. He he you know Anyway, so yeah, but sorry, he did. He said the complete opposite, and he's not shy to say it. So that's he said, he said cool. I was in it for the money. What's that? No, he said he said I was in it for the money. He's in it for the money. He said he said he, he said he was in it for the money. Yeah. Well, here, don't get me wrong. Show business is my profession, and I expect to be paid for for my work. But. Uh, but that wasn't the question. The question was, what was the experience I had, and and, and what was the, what was the most uh, uh, fulfilling experience, or what was the greatest experience, or whatever, however you you worded it. And and so I was speaking to that. But of course, I, I you know I go to work just like any any other American or any other person around the world. You go to work, you expect to get paid, especially if you do a good job and you show up on time and you do your work. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I can dig what he's saying. Yeah, of course. I came, you know, there to get paid. I didn't come to do it for free. No. I mean, I can make movies at home for free. No, you know? absolutely. Right, right. So, but at the same time, that aside, that's what agents work out. That's what managers work out, lawyers and all of that. But for me, the artist, the person, the son of my mother, Ruth, I do it because it brings me personal joy. And I, I try to look for the personal joy in the experience of doing. And that's what keeps me going, not the money. Money comes and it goes, comes and it goes. Yeah, uh, so some of the actors I spoke to at the Comic-Con here, there's quite a few, and I said, I said to Dee Wallace, have you ever watched any of your films? And she said, sometimes. <laughs> How about yourself? I don't. I don't watch them. Yeah. I watched Break In when it premiered, and I haven't sat down and watched Break In since. Wow. Wow. My only memory of Break In really is doing it. Is doing it. The actual doing it. I just. I just. 
I just don't feel comfortable sitting around looking at my own projects for some yeah. reason. As I feel like I, you know, I've done it, and you know, unless I have a purpose to do that, like I did the commentary, Blu-ray commentary for Breaking Two, uh, and for the new DVD Blu-ray set, and I was sitting with Sam Furstenberg, the director Schmulik, and uh, you know, of course, you know, I had to see the film because you know I'm giving comments about specific specific scenes. And uh, so, you know, because of it, the, the, the nature of it, I watched the whole movie. It was like, okay, they, they played one second. What do you think about that? And you're playing it, talking about the movie and that and so forth. But I wouldn't just sit around and, and just watch Break It. Or yeah. like I have some, I have some films, uh, screenings, uh, you know, dates or later this year. And I'll go there and I'll watch the movie, maybe. I mean, maybe I'll sit in the audience, I don't know. Uh, but um, I'll do a, it's, it'll be followed by a Q&A and I'll have a moderator and all that. And we'll talk about the making of the movie and all that stuff. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 just, I just always felt uncomfortable watching any of my performances. It just... And it makes me feel weird. It's like some sort of out of body experience or something weird, like because <laughs> you know, like, I'm looking at myself and then I know that I'm looking at myself and I'm thinking while I'm looking at myself how I was feeling while I was doing it and it does something weird to me, like uh, like I would like I would look at the film like you might look at it from a different perspective because maybe you're a fan or you're enjoying the moment or whatever. I'll look at it and think, God, that's when my stomach was hurting. <laughs> <laughs> or I remember the the uh, I, I got I got a hold of a, a you know a, a tainted blueberry muffin that morning and boy did that hurt. <laughs> or or I might say oh I wonder if they saw that I spit on myself. <laughs> so you don't watch your own stuff. That's fine. <laughs> what is what, what is that that? reason? Sorry. Did you catch I said, that? Unless I have a reason, I won't look at it. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, what would be your favorite movie of all time? Do you have one? Do you yeah, have top five. Casablanca. Top five. My top five movies: Casablanca, the original Star Wars, um, I like I like Errol Flynn is is um, uh, nice. Robin Hood, the original one with Errol Flynn. Errol Flynn. Yes, even to this day, I've seen all kinds of movies, people flying and levitating or whatever, but I just love Errol Flynn as Robin Hood. Uh, and I also like Guy Williams and, and uh, Zorro, Zorro, the original yeah. Zorro. Original Zorro, okay. Yeah, for some reason, these films just really, I just never forget them. Uh, let me see, I had five, so that was four. I had Casablanca, that was my number one. Hmm. And... Uh, Oh, and another movie, The Imitation of Life. Imitation of Life. God, if we had a six, you know what's my other one? Hit us serve, with it. You serve with love. With Sidney Poitier. Sidney Poitier. Oh, okay, cool. Right so, on. I love that movie. I still watch that movie now, and it makes me cry at the end there, you know, when uh, when she sings to serve with love for him at the, at the dance, at the graduation dance. I'm like, oh, oh. my God, I love this movie. You know, it's you know that movie. When you look at it now, it's so timely, even today. Especially when you think about all the you know the racial uh, uh, racism and and the things that that are in the news every day and all this intolerance and all kinds of stuff. It's right there in that movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Sidney Poitier hands, handles it with su like such a gentleman, you know. Yeah. And it was just it's just really really cool movie. Um, so uh, I would have to make six movies. Six. City Poitier, City Poitier, Casablanca, Star Wars. Uh, Errol you, Flynn. Oh, you know, wait, since we're talking about movies, my favorite scene, though, that just blew my mind, out of all the movies, I love all those movies as a, as a movie, right? Okay. But I remember seeing for the first time, uh, I saw, I was there at, at, at Man's, or Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And I saw Superman. Yay! I mean, the one with Christopher Reeves, right? Oh, 
And when he was, you remember the scene where he met Lois on the on the pen, uh, the penthouse, the balcony there, and he kind of floated in there. And I just, and when he stepped into the light, I went, "Oh my God, that's Superman!" <laughs> like I totally believed it. Like that's that, because that, I grew up in the comp with the comic books and all of that. So I was like, "That's what Superman would look like if he was alive." It was out of the comic book, he would look just like that. And his personality, you know, like it was it was real. You know, like that's what's missing in a Superman movie now to me. He he knows he's Superman. Yeah. Right? And so he plays Superman. Yeah. Well what made Christopher Reeves so cool is that he could have been a guy that lives across the street from you, even with the Superman costume <laughs> one. I'm not talking about when he's when he's Clark Kent. Yeah. With the full co- you know what I'm saying, right? The way he talks. Oh yeah. He kind of walked around, you know, like he made walking around in a, in a, in a let's face it, man, in a, in a, in a vibrant blue jumpsuit, skin tight spandex suit, yellow underwear, a red underwear with a yellow belt, red boots, and a cape, and he made it look like he was just walking around in a, in a, in a t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> oh yeah. How do you do that? I, see, yeah. see, that's incredible. That's oh. incredible. Absolutely. So yeah. Adolfo, what, what I want you to do is, uh, when I first met Jay last year uh, online, like we were, we we were start, I was starting up my YouTube channel and I was doing videos. I did the uh, visit of Superman one, which was shot here. Some of the flit- in, in Niagara Falls, or, in Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I um I couldn't get down because there's an attraction called the White Water Walk where Lois uh, jumps into the rapids down below. Right. They are the highest class rapids in the world. They're the sixth class rapids, and they call it White Water Walk. It's where the Niagara River bottlenecks, and then right. the water's just racing through because, remember, there's four lakes pouring in, so that's what gives you the high class rapids. But right alongside it is this beautiful um, walkway that you can walk along and you can see. So what I would like for you to do Seeing you saw that, if you wouldn't mind, go back on, go into my YouTube channel, and uh, obviously your promo promo is there. But go back a few videos and look down. I can even, I'll even send you the link. Whatever. Um, I did that one, but then I went back and I revisited it, and I did it where you actually, where I'm standing on the walkway and you see where Lois jumps in and all that. Now, when Margot Kidder was here last year, I'm going to tell you this. uh, I spoke to her and she said, I did. I jumped in the that that water. What? You crazy? You crazy, lady? You crazy? <laughs> you crazy? Yeah. yeah. And she was like, she 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 said even the stunt people were like they were just totally blown away. <laughs> Back to with, with, but she did have a harness and everything on, and she actually went down. And there is the part where I kind of way show it where. They're coming out of the water. Uh, you see Clark Kent, well, uh, Christopher Reeve pulling her out of the water. But I'm telling you, man, yeah, I'll send you that link, and and uh, I, I'd love for you to hear the feedback on what I the the job. I'd love, I I love to see that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll send you that. And Jay, Jay absolutely loves it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's Superman. Superman two, by the way. I think you said Superman one, but it's Superman two, right? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Superman two. You're right. I was gonna say, don't get that wrong. Don't get that oh, wrong. Sorry. Superman. I'll send, him, I'll send him that anyway. That's right. I'm so, sorry. so we're clear. The greatest scene that I remember is yes, Christopher Reeves as Superman one, but the scene itself was the one on the penthouse, right? Balcony, when he was flirting with her. And he, you know, how tall are you? Like he's six one, two twenty, blah blah blah. I was like, oh my god, this guy's that's the way he's acting. I said, that's that's Superman for sure. I was sold. Sorry. Forever. My bad. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, still send me the link. I'll still check it out. Right on, right on. Yeah. All right, Jay. Um, I was gonna ask you, did you finish your memoirs, The King of Crenshaw, or have you oh, is that done? Actually, no, it's not done yet, but we're actually working on it now. And again, you know, when you, I didn't realize getting into writing my book or getting it written and all that stuff, uh, how much information uh, is, you know, part of my life. Uh, You know, there's my life, 
which is a lot in itself. And then there's all of my involvement in dance and 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 what it you know started and, and you know just all of it and and being able to weave it together where you know it it it, it, it tells a a true compelling complexion of my life in street dancing and my life as a street dancer. Um, so it's, 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 it was daunting. It's daunting because of all this information and how much of it you have to like kind of scale it back because you can't tell it all. A mm -hmm. book could be, you know, you know, 1500 pages, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, to be able to scale it back. So we realized now the Kings of Crenshaw is, is really going to be a three book set. Uh, we have the King of Crenshaw, which is uh, the first book, and then the second one would be the beginning. The second one is actually the beginning, and the third is the is the uh, the now uh, the legacy, as we call it. So I think, I think it's feel, shout, love, pride, dance. Oh, that's cool. It's the King of Crenshaw: colon feel, shout, uh, cry, dance, blah blah blah. Those, those five things in the first book. So, so it's a trilogy, really. So when is that you we expect that one to come out? Uh, we, we were hoping for later this year, and it looked like it would take us into first or second quarter of 2017 to, to get it right. Okay, it's, well. it's, you know what takes so much time is research. Even though I loved it, you still got to research. You still got to cross, you know, cross fact check it. You know, did this happen on this day? That was on that day. This happened here. You know, because what you don't want to do is just start, you know, throwing around dates. You know, and you say no, that wasn't seventy two. It was in seventy five, and then you got a problem. Um, so you know that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm going. I'm going to tell a story. You know, tell it personal. It'll be personal. Uh, but I'm not into telling any, making any uh, tell-all books or anything like that. But certainly, people need to know what my life was really like and what and the and the huge mistakes I made in my life uh, and some just the terrible choices that I, I have made over over the last 45 plus years. You know, I, you know, people see my fr the fruits of my labor and it's the success of my labor. But they don't really know about all the shortcomings, the stumbles, the, the times I really fell, and you know, and, and and had to pick myself back up, and and the huge disappointments that, that come along with it. Not only my own personal disappointments, but all the di disappointments I have given other people. I think that that's important as well. So I mean, this finding the right balance is what taking time. So. Be patient, people. It will come and it will be done right. Cool. I, I, when it does come out, I'm going to order a copy, and I'll remind you of this interview, and I want you to autograph my book for me. Oh, oh yeah. You, you got it. You got it. Okay, thank well, you. you, know, you this, is, this, this show will be part of the junkie when we pro, uh, provide a promo for the book. Good. That's all. We'll, we'll take it. So we'll make sure that you have copies with you, signed, and you can hold it up and show people it. Oh yeah, we'll promote uh, you. Yeah, we'll we'll put together like a book tour, a kind of it'll be like a sort of book tour, lecture tour. Oh yeah. I'll actually, lecture about those historical fine points in the book, or uh, personal life. Uh, I'll, hopefully, it will it will motivate people. It will it will uh, give them you know empower young people and other people. So we'll do, we'll do that, and uh, might might as well make Niagara a part of it. <laughs> Well, you just made you just made my year, dude. That's cool. I yeah. appreciate you saying that. Now I'm just gonna be like unable to sleep the rest of the night. Uh, okay. you, you got it. You got it. Then. <laughs> and now, I'm already nervous as hell because I'm already off my game tonight. I, I'm just like sitting here going, "Oh my gosh, what am I talking about over here? What am I having some conversation by myself?" <laughs> I don't know. It's all good. Hey, I wanted to ask you though. Um, you know, you were talking about some of the things, your mistakes, and all that kind of stuff throughout your life, or decisions and all that kind of stuff whenever it came to roles uh for like uh, if, if anybody uh came to you and said hey i got this for you this part or 
was did you ever refuse any parts? Did you ever refuse any roles? Did you ever uh, through your acting career? Yes, I have. Um, I just didn't want to really be anybody's pimp, and I really didn't want to. Um, I don't mind being in a comedy when it's good comedy, but I don't want to do a comedy where I'm the joke. So there's been a number of people who asked me to do things, and I felt like, wait a minute, are you trying to make a joke out of me? You know, then I, you know, that I don't want to do. Uh, I was obviously offered to do, you know, a role in Kicking It Old School mm -hmm. with uh, Jamie Kennedy, uh, which I choreographed that film, and I was the dance, uh, the dance director of that film as well. And I just felt like the role that they wanted uh, me to do, I mean, they wanted me to play myself, obviously, but I felt the situation wasn't funny. Uh, it was it wasn't thought out properly, and and so I declined. Hmm. Um, uh, people say, hey, well, you know, they would, pay, they would have paid you nicely, you know, you know, that's nice, you know. But I'm not. Again, I do things because I yeah, I want to get paid because I, I'm a professional. But my my personal feelings, my soul, who I am, that's not for sale. That I that I I retain. And when I see a project and it doesn't speak well, or or it makes other people look bad, or something like of that nature. Now, when I play like a killer, of course, you know, I'm, not, I'm not talking about I wouldn't play a killer or something, or hitman or whatever. Of course, I would. I'm not talking about that. But there's but there's roles that are sort of demeaning, and they're not they're they're not cool. Now, would I play a pimp? Yeah, but it better be a a, a good one. It, like, like, say, for instance, the one that uh, uh, Morgan Freeman played with Christopher Reeves. You know the movie he did with Christopher Reeves? He was a pimp, and Christopher Reeves was the, uh, like, a newspaper, a uh, news writer or whatever. It was Street something? What was Street that? something, right, right, with Christopher yeah. Reeves and Morgan Freeman. It was actually Morgan Freeman's breakout role. Okay, he played a pimp in that movie. That was great, the way it was. It wasn't like a stereotypical pimp. It was something, something extra. Uh, yeah, I would do that, of course. But I'm just going. I'm not just going to be, hey, baby, and talk about just doing, just to be doing that. No, I yeah. just, just stay home. <laughs> now, if you, uh, we've got five minutes, and if you wish to hang in for an overtime, that's fine too. Uh, but we, we'll, we can uh, finish in five minutes. But uh, uh, did you ever, if if you couldn't, uh, if you, if if you didn't act or if you didn't uh, dance or whatever, what do you think you would have been or what do you think would you be? What, what would you be? If you... I'm glad you asked that because only that's interesting because I've only been, uh, I've never been asked that question really and I, but I've talked about this answer <laughs> I'm going to give you with, with close friends. Oh, okay. People Thanks. that I know. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, I have a strong desire, and I always had it in me. I would, I would want to be a lawyer. Oh. It's specifically a defense attorney, not a prosecutor. Okay. I feel like there's so many people that have dealt uh, some dirty blows in the judicial system. Uh, I think they can't afford them, so I probably would be doing a lot of pro bono work. <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I know that, and but. Of course, I would be trying to find a balance again. You know, how many people can I try to help that really don't have money that I really believe are innocent and needs proper uh, representation, proper counsel? I would have, I would have loved to be a lawyer. The second one, which I really, I love just as much, is is a crime scene investigator, a forensic uh, investigator. I just, I just really love looking at things, I have an analytical mind, and I love looking at things and trying to figure out how it it happened that way, and, and what were the sequence of events that led up to this moment, by walking it back away from it. I just love that. It's, uh, uh, it's something that I feel I, I have a gift for, but I just don't, I just don't have the education, but I have the, somehow, 
gift in me to, to be able to uh, figure those things out. So I would have loved that type of work. Um, again, but they kind of work together. Maybe I would have been a lawyer with a kind of forensic investigator mind. You know, so. Yeah, those two. Lawyer or forensic. That's really cool. I'm going to pass it over to Jay in a second. Um, I, I, have a, I have a very good friend up here. His name's Jerry Potter, and uh, he, uh, he and I work together. Um, he's got two scripts actually, and uh, I would like to uh, I would like to send it to you actually. I'd like oh, to sure. send them to you to check check out. Um, okay. You know, uh, he he's uh, he he was in a show called Creepy Canada, which was on for three uh, five seasons, but he was in the first three. He cast he he was uh, all he was involved in the whole thing. He was the main actor in it. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, he's actually looking at a movie right now in Atlanta that's being shot, and I don't know if I can give too much detail about it. Um, but anyway, yeah, if I could, I'd love to send you, I'd love to send you those two scripts. Uh, you know, and uh, anyway, he he's uh, yeah, he he was also asking, and I I don't know if he just came in the later part of the show. I'll fill him in. I'll tell him later. But he just wanted to know. What else you had coming up besides the one with Genuine? Anything else? Like, uh, do you have a couple other things coming up? Well, I, you know, I, what I have going on is I've created a couple of reality shows. Well, half a dozen reality shows, and I'm always seeking opportunities to pitch them to network. Or, and, and again, that's a that's a that's a, a daily grind getting those network pitches together and, and 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 so forth. So I do that. That's what I do. The lion's share of my time. The other ones I do guest speaker. Uh, a guest speaker and sort of a cultural historian. So I, I travel the world doing that and providing also workshops uh, for young kids or young people. It could be you know, any any age group, but dance, comprehensive dance classes, um, giving them accurate knowledge about street dance, using street dance and my experience to empower young people. That's what I do. Um, that's what I enjoy doing most. So uh, I'll be in, uh, next I'll be in Seattle. Well, no, next I'll be at a fundraiser on the on August the uh, 19th. I'll be in Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, a fundraiser with Jay Events, um, the host of that fundraiser. I think it's a fundraiser for, an arts, for arthritis and the Children's Foundation. But they're doing sort of mock battles, and it's, and it's going to have this whole break-in movie theme to it, to the fundraiser. So I'll do that, and then I'm, and then I'll be working with Hex, uh, 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 Lex Hector, who will be uh, promoting and uh, my workshops, my ultimate street dance camp. So I'll do that uh, over the weekend, and I'll be hopefully we'll be back in Los Angeles by the 23rd, and then right after that, on the 27th, I'll be getting uh, uh, from Stage Arts and the Universal Hip Hop. A museum, I'll get a Lifetime Achievement Award. Nice. On, on August the 27th. Then I'll do another television, uh, radio, uh, internet radio television show and, and, and radio uh, with, uh, uh, I think it's called the Black Hollywood, Black Hollywood uh, Network. Anyway, I'm doing that. And then I'll, go, I'll be at uh, some screenings. I have some screenings for the Breaking Film, followed by Q&A. And all of that, and we I will provide workshops for them and give seminars around the city in conjunction with the uh, the Olympia Film Festival. Oh, nice! So the Olympia Film Festival then in around the Seattle area, then I'll take me into Paris. So I'll be at the uh, Mona Bismarck uh, American Cultural Center in Paris, and I'll uh, I'm, I'm grateful enough to be part of. Uh, his name is John Good, John Paul Good, the famed photographer who was once married to uh, uh, Grace Jones. Oh. And so, so, you know, I've been, you know, invited to be part of this, uh, one of the speakers on that event and doing a round table with Jean Claude and Patrick, another gentleman who created the idea. I think it's called the uh, Birth of a Culture, colon, uh, Soul Train and Beyond event. <laughs> uh, so I do some workshops, and now I just talked to some promoters today, and they were like, hey, since you're going to be out in this neck of the woods, on this side of the pond, why don't we bring you into London? So I'm able, I'm able to 
make a move into London right after Paris. And um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, kind of <laughs> busy schedule. But yeah, doing that, and I've got some other dates that I'm being sure of, which could could include China again. I return to China on the five city tour. That's that's being worked out. So you know things like that. And then, and then the rest of the time, I just you know I just. Try, I go and visit my mom. That's a big thing for me. Uh, my mom is 85 years old. She, yeah, suffers a bit from, she suffers from dementia a bit and forgets who I am once in a while. But I, one of the things I really learned, and, and you guys out there, you, you might as well get to learn it now while you can. Because you never know when your mom will really need it. Uh, I learned how to paint her fingernails, okay? <laughs> it was, it was the first time I did it, the first time I did it, like, you know, I didn't really, really know how you do it, so I'm, like, putting on the fingernail polish, right? I'm like, okay, mom, I'm going to paint your fingernails purple, right? So I'm uh, painting them purple, because, again, I was joking, I said, what's my favorite color? You guys didn't know, but anyway, my favorite color is purple. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm, I'm painting her fingernails, and she, you know, she forgets that we're painting the fingernails, so she's waving her hand. I'm like, no, don't, don't. So I'm grabbing her fingers and then getting fingernail polish all over my hands, my arms, <laughs> my face. It was like, it was like Dennis the Menace, it was like some kind of crazy any moment. So anyway, here's the key. And you learned it from Shabadu right here on the Sean and Jay show. Guys, learn about the clear coat. It's all about the dry coat. I didn't know what the dry coat was. Do you know what the dry coat is? Okay, no. yeah, okay, here's the thing. This is okay, there's the there's the fingernail polish which you have to apply, right? And then when you do you gotta go and blow the fingers and all that stuff. And then there's this clear stuff that you have to put on top of it. And it causes the um, the fingernail polish to dry faster. And, okay, so the next time around, I, I was a little bit, I was still getting like the fingernail polish up to the first knuckle. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, wait a minute, you're creating a whole another nail, you know, so it's like, I'm painting from the first knuckle down. So now, guys, after about the third or fourth time, I can actually keep the brush inside the cuticle, do the clear coat, no more mess. Wait. They, anyways, I, I learned that, and the other one was, here's another big one, is tying my mother's hair in a ponytail. Now, you know, that might sound easy for a lot of you young ladies out there and mm -hmm. teenage daughters and young daughters and mothers or whatever, but for me, it was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> to try to, you know, like, you know, yeah, I've seen it before, but you know how you have to grab the ponytail, you got to, you know, do this. And brush it back, and then you gotta keep holding it, and you gotta put one of those rubber things, and you gotta keep twisting it. And so, I did. I did uh, deliver newspapers when I was younger, so I remember how to put the new, the, the rubber band on the newspaper before they had the automatic ones that put the rubber bands on the newspaper. So I was like, oh, it's kind of like that. So I, so I used my newspaper boy skills. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like. I grabbed it and I said, okay, so in my mind, I was like, the ponytails, like the like the newspaper rolled up, and I'm going to use it with this hand, so I have to feel it, I have to, the, around my fingers here, the rubber band, and I grab it, and I, this, 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 boom! And now I got that down, too. So anyway, I have those kind of moments with my mom. That's that's my greatest joy, and it's uh, my uh, my... Biggest pastime, and uh, it, it takes precedent over everything else that I do. Because without my mom, I'd be nothing. Yeah, I hear you, bro. I, I, would, you. I would. I literally would be nothing. She was. She just was the strongest lady, the toughest lady, the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my life, and I've ever known in my life. And and because of her, I, I was able to. Do everything that I do in my life, and I just guys, I'll say this one as my parting words. People ask me, so well, you know, what's your real secret, Shabba do behind dancing? And the young people ask me that all over the world, and I said, it's my mother. 
And they go, what do you mean? I said, well, when I was a little kid, my mom called me into the room. She says, you know, sit down. Sat down in the bed next to her. And she whispered in my ear, you're special. And I believe her. <laughs> and I still do. So, That's you, guys, you, want to make it in, you want to make it in life? Get good with your mama. Yeah, family first. That's cool, man. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, family first is true, but I mean specifically, get yeah. good with mama. <laughs> yeah. And and I I don't want to damper everything. I lost my mom three years ago, and you're absolutely right, Adolfo. She's the best in the world. She's the greatest. I've seen pictures of you with your mom, and yeah. I get I get teary eyed because I miss my mom every day. My mom passed away on the 17th. Her birthday was December 24th, and of course Christmas was a hard time is a hard time for me. And uh, you know what? Absolutely, hold your mom dear, no matter what, man, because she 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 is everything. She really truly is. And uh, yeah, those are those are awesome words. Um, Jay, uh, Adolfo, you know, uh, go ahead, Jay. Anything else for uh, for uh, you know, Shabo? I just want to say uh, it's like been so awesome to meet you. Hip hop's first matinee idol, mm -hmm. you know. You could have been Ricardo Tubbs. That would have been great. No, that would have been awesome. <laughs> that would have been great. But I, I, I appreciate you being on our show, man. It's been great meeting you. And uh, anytime you want to, like, just hang out and talk, me and Sean are available. We don't have to do anything like this. We could just hang and talk if you ever want to, too. But we'd love to have you back on. Oh, sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. So we'll, we'll, make, it, we'll make this a second go. Uh, yeah, I just want to give a shout-out to Claudia Dumas. That's a special woman in my life, and uh, she's now in Italy. So hopefully next time we're on, you will see her too. That would be awesome. That would so. be great. Um, growing up as uh, you know a teen, and and with you on the silver screen, I mean, to me you're larger. You're you're just like Sylvester Stallone to me. I don't care what anybody says, and you might not be in the compare. You might not say oh, I don't compare myself to anybody, but you know what? To me. I compare you along all the lines of all those people because I grew up with a lot of actors. Movies was my life, m was my life, and still somewhat is. And uh, every day I'm always quoting different things. Al Pacino, right down to, oh my gosh, I, yeah. I could go on forever. But <laughs> and that's a Whoopi Goldberg thing. I could speak yeah. forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for being on. And Jay and I, we are so grateful to have you. And uh, for those out there, you know, this was a great interview. And, and uh, we had a blast, like uh, Shabadoo said in his promo. And, uh, you know, like I say, in, you're welcome to come back anytime. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much. I, I had a blast. <laughs> All right, Jay. Hang, hang tight with us, Adolfo. Don't, don't hang up with us yet. Okay. Just hang up. All right, okay. Jay, take us out, brother. Okay. We appreciate you guys watching. We hope you keep watching us live with Sean and Jay. As always, we love y'all. Peace.